Well, Anna, he's gone out of the frying pan and into the fire. On the campaign finance violation, it's a question of whether you believe Cohen or you believe the president. This is a president who's lied over 4,000 times, according to the Washington Post, who has a motive to do it. We'll see if there's corroborating evidence of that campaign finance crime. Kim is right, uh, as, uh, as Cohen put it. But the striking thing about the video we just watched Anna, is that the president, in his usual clumsy way, has stumbled into another federal crime because he signed his federal financial disclosures under false statements penalty, 18 U.S.C. 1001. Guess what? If you owe somebody money, he just said, yes, I knew about the payments. He repaid uh, Michael Cohen. He had to list that on his forms. He omitted it. There's already been uh, a, a criminal referral by my watchdog group. It resulted in a complaint from the Office of Government Ethics to the Department of Justice, and President Trump just stumbled right into that second federal offense. So we're seeing it may not be the beginning of the end, but it's the end of the beginning. And of course, the big issue is still yet to come. Mueller's obstruction of justice report, far more powerful evidence there. Ken Cuccinelli, do you agree with Ambassador Eisen that the president may have just opened himself up to a different crime? Uh, well, it depends what he filed, and it also depends on when he knew compared to when he filed. So I, I don't necessarily agree with Norm, though, though he's, you know, I appreciate his comments about the filings themselves. That will be a consideration. Uh, I don't think there's, I think we're seeing on the, on the collusion front, as Norm referenced, that there's nothing there in terms of collusion. This stuff may, may come back and bite the president, but I do think Michael Cohen is a pretty weak read for those who want to get after the president to stand on. Um, he has established a terrible reputation for himself just in the time America's come to know him. And, uh, and I, I don't know that that's going to hold up. So if the president was facing off with any person in his circle that, that is, would turn on him, Michael Cohen is the least, uh, the least credible among them. And, uh, and that's what we're going to have faced here. And, and someone as, as well reputable as Alan Dershowitz has talked about how one witness gets used against another. He wrote about this this week, where one person's plea deal, uh, Michael Cohen has an incentive to make it sound good because the better it sounds, the better his deal. And of course, that's at the disadvantage of the president and possibly the truth. But if, but if the time. truth is that he didn't, that Michael Cohen wasn't involved in all of this, and that the president paid for it directly, like it, I, it just doesn't make common sense that that he would have pleaded guilty to a crime that he didn't even commit. And as you talk about credibility, though, you have you do bring up a good point. Michael Cohen has said a lot of different things about this payment, but I also want you to take what we just heard from the president admitting he knew of the payments and what he said months ago. Listen. President, did you know about the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels? No, no. Why, what Michael, why did Michael Cohen make it if it was no Well, you have to ask Michael Cohen. Michael's my an attorney, and you'll have to ask Michael Cohen. Ken Cuccinelli, back to you. Does that lie after lie after lie not concern you? Oh, there's no question that the evolution of the story on this is, is, is harmful to the president. Um, my point about Michael Cohen is that Michael Cohen does not sit across this line from the president and look like a credible witness. I mean, he gave an interview this summer where he said, my top priority is saving my tail and protecting my family. And, um, and, and how you structure a plea deal can be part of doing exactly that, just as you know, Alan Dershowitz wrote about earlier this week. Kim Whaley, if a sitting president can't be indicted, what are the options? Charges well, after office? 
Well, I think there's some ambiguity as to whether a sitting president can't be indicted. It's not clear one way or the other in the Constitution. There are competing experts on this topic. I personally view uh, the Constitution as all about accountability and that there's no one branch that is above the law, including the president of the United States. Um, and so one possibility, theoretically, would be an indictment under seal that would toll the statute of limitations on any crimes so he could be prosecuted afterwards. But I do think the cleanest, clearest resolution here is a political answer answer to this. And on the one hand, the president gets a pass because of this question on indictment in terms of criminal uh, liability. On the other hand, he should be held to a higher standard. And for purposes of impeachment, you don't need a crime that can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt before a jury in order to justify impeachment. Again, that's a political judgment. Um, but I think that the American people need to start keeping an eye right now and putting some some real pressure on Congress to, to start looking into this, because at a minimum, we're at, at that red line where the are really, really serious uh, charges here and things that have come out of the president's own mouth that implicate him not only in crimes but in lies to the American public. And that undermines the entire rule of law and the integrity of our democracy, which I think is, is a more important issue than politics right now. There's also the question about what Trump might do next and, and whether pardons could come into play at any point. Now, Cohen's attorney, Lenny Davis, said this morning he doesn't believe Cohen would even accept a pardon. But Paul Manafort, who was just convicted on eight charges yesterday, around the same time Cohen was pleading guilty. Now, his situation could be a different story. And Trump tweeting about Manafort this morning, praising him for not breaking. If Trump pardons Manafort, Ambassador Eisen, is that obstruction of justice? Um, uh, uh, well, Anna, uh, here at Brookings, uh, we've just published the second edition of our obstruction of justice report. And we explain in there uh, as we go through the incredible amount of substantial evidence of obstruction that, yes, if the president issues a pardon with a corrupt intent, if it's part of this pattern that we saw, starting with demanding Comey's loyalty, firing Comey, urging Sessions contrary to his legal obligations not to recuse, uh, dictating the false statement of Trump Tower, all these tweets attacking Mueller in the investigation and now issuing pardons to block justice, to obstruct justice. If you use a legal power, the American law in many cases have held, and we go through them, uh, if you use your legal power as an American official with a corrupt intent to try to impede an investigation for a wrongful reason, like by issuing a corrupt pardon, yes, that is part of obstruction of justice. And that is, as we study what happened yesterday, the one-two punch, the two bombshells of Cohen and Manafort, uh, the question is what, come next, what comes next? And we know Mueller is focusing on obstruction of justice. And so I think these uh, hints of pardons hold more peril for the president. Everyone stand by. Thank you. Much more to discuss as we await a White House briefing scheduled to get underway here within the next uh, few minutes, really. And just in, reaction from members of Congress, what Republican leadership are saying and not saying about Michael Cohen's plea, including his offer to testify before lawmakers without immunity. I'll talk with a member of the Judiciary Committee. And moments from now, what we believe will be Sarah Sanders' 100th White House briefing. Hill are mostly mum on the news. And those who are commenting say the president is not implicated whatsoever in the felony convictions of his former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, and his former campaign chief, Paul Manafort. What about Michael Cohen? He's, he's accusing he's, 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 the he's, played, he's played guilty. Uh, and that's the way the Constitution works. So what about so, so what, uh, what, so what else? About him so what else? So what else? What about him to worry about? Mr. Cohen's credibility is going to be challenged. I don't think the full story has been written yet. Do you think this opens up the president to being indicted while sitting in office? It's never been done. No, I don't, because I don't think he can be indicted while sitting in office. Joining us now, a Democrat who is speaking out about what could be next for President Trump, Congressman David Cicilline. He is a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Thank you, Congressman, for being with us. First, your reaction My to pleasure. the president just saying that hush money for two women who alleged affairs came directly from him, and therefore it's not even a campaign violation. 
Well, I think uh, Ambassador Eisen is right. The president may have, in fact, admitted to another uh, crime right here on air. Uh, but the president has changed his story on this uh, on several occasions. First, he denied knowing anything about it. Then he denied knowing where the money came from. Then he admitted he actually provided the money. I think this is a very, very sad day for the country. This is a the president now has been basically an unindicted co-conspirator in a criminal offense. Uh, Michael Cohen testified under oath at his uh, plea hearing that he was directly directed to do this by, the, by a candidate, obviously that was the President of the United States, uh, to commit a federal offense. Uh, this is very serious. Uh, there's also the conviction of Paul Manafort, his campaign chair. So there are now 35 either indictments, pleas, or convictions related to this investigation. I think this is a very, very serious development. And as you know, Congress has an important responsibility in terms of oversight of the executive branch. Let me read to you House Speaker Paul Ryan's statement reacting to the Michael Cohen news. We are aware of Mr. Cohen's guilty plea to these serious charges. We will need more information than is currently available at this point. Congressman, how do you respond to not only that statement, but really the relative silence from many other members of your committee, the Judiciary Committee, Republicans like Trey Gowdy or Jim Jordan? Yeah, I mean, it's been very, very disappointing. Uh, we have tried on the Democratic side to really press the committee, the chairman and the Republicans on the committee to fulfill their constitutional responsibilities. We have very serious oversight functions that we should be performing. We have written letters. We've done, uh, rec you know, motions in the, in the committee to try to force the committee to do its oversight. And in a very disappointing way, the Republicans on the committee very often act more like they're part of Donald Trump's defense team than uh, individuals that are...